Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is March 22nd, 2021. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report, one of Timer Digest's top ranked stock market timers. You can see our disclaimer there. We're working a little bit differently today, so we're trying to get a report in because some interesting things happened in the market today. I want to remind everyone about our subscription service, Woodson Wave Report, established in 1997. You can see our uh, annual subscription for Fibonacci 233 a year. You get reports monthly plus interim reports as market conditions warrant. In addition to our monthly subscription, which is 144 Fibonacci dollars a month, daily reports uh, virtually every day that the market is open, and sometimes we do more than one report a day. I want to thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, remind you to hit the reminder bell and the like button and comment and share on the videos. I really appreciate your support of the channel. Okay, without further ado, we'll get into the analysis here. We'll start with the S&P 500. You can see our long-term standing target of 39.96 was not quite achieved. We're looking at an hourly bar of the S&P. You can see on March 17 last week, the market hit 39.83 within about uh, 12 points of our ideal Fibonacci target. From that high on an hourly chart, we can see wave one down, wave two up, wave three down, wave four up, and wave five down. That constitutes the first five waves to the downside. And you can see we have a retracement up. You can see here that the wave four high held below the wave one low here. So it's a clean five wave decline, which should signal a change in trend, a change in direction. I want to get a little closer look at this on, a, I believe it's a five minute chart. Here is the same thing. You see one down, two up, three down, four up, and there is five. Let's look at the, uh, let's make that a little bit bigger there if we can. Okay, let's see if we can get a retracement of that decline. Okay, and we'll go from the top there and the bottom right there and as you can see here we are once again the market has retraced between a fibonacci 618 and the 786 uh, retracement level it appears to be uh, turning around let's look at that abc correction and see how the c wave relates to the a wave so this would be the beginning and this would be the a top and we have the B down here. And lo and behold, look at that. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. So C equals A here. Let me put that on there for you guys. Okay, let's get the, uh, the ABC tool out here, if you will. Okay, there's the beginning. And there is A. There is B. And there is where C. I'll bring that down. Where C equals A right at 39.55. And as you can see, the market turned from there. I do want to point out that uh, C will equal a Fibonacci 1.618 of A right under the all time high. And since this would be a two or a second wave, it can retrace all but 100%. So there's potential for the C wave to go up just under the all-time high and make what appears to be an almost double top. Is that likely? No, but uh, it's perfect right here. But a common relationship is a 1.618 to 1 for C to A. So we're counting this as one down from the high right there at the low on the 19th, which should be 38.86, A up, B down, C up to today's high with right about an hour left. It was at uh, 15 or 3 p.m. Central Time. And then you see the market started down. So um, what we would need to see here then is, uh, let me remove that. Let's just say that that was the top. So let's get an idea or the top of two where the third wave relationships are 
in relation to the first wave, okay? So we'll get a Fibonacci extension on that. We'll get from the all-time high here down to the first wave low, go to the second wave high. My apologies. Let's try that again. Let's get the Fibonacci extension tool. Here we go. There's the top. There's the all-time high. And that's not working. I got that on a... On a I'll put it out for you guys right now. I've got that on a picture here. Here we go. Okay, so there's the all-time high. Here's our first wave down. We've got A, B, C up. C is comfortably between the 618 retracement level and the 786. That makes wave two. You can see that's the ideal all-time high there. Right underneath the all-time high of 39.83, C equals a 1.618 just under there. We don't expect that to happen. But the third wave down will gain equality with one at 38.57 and a 1.618 at 37.96. So that's a significant decline from right around 39.40 where the S&P is now. Not that that'll happen all in one day, but um, that's what we're looking at. It might not take more than a couple days. So if this is two up, then three down should be sharp and swift. We'll see what happens with that. We want to also get into a Tesla analysis today. Okay, there's the all-time high at 900 of back in January. You see the first wave down, the second wave up here. Then we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for wave 3, a wave 4 up. I'm going to move that over, put it in place. There we go. And then a, a 1, okay, there we go. I'm sorry, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's the fifth wave, and that's one down. Two up here, hit right on the 50% retracement. Okay, there's a 382, there's a 50, and there's a 618. This could go higher, but so far that counts as an A up, a B down, and a C up. And we could really move that all the way over here. This here is really uh, confusing things because the, um, well, for what it's worth, the bulls will want to see a move above this high here which is right at 719. You can see it's bumping up against and showing heavy resistance there. From there, we would need to get above the 618 retracement at 762 for the bulls, and then, of course, above the 900 all-time high. I think I have that um, from this wave one low here, which was March 5. Okay, we can look a little closer at a five-minute chart. There's March 5 low, and then we've got an ABC up, and all of this sideways action here. Okay, could we count this one up, two down, three up, and four across? Yes, we could. Okay, and uh, let's just get a Fibonacci extension and see where that that second wave is, or the third wave as a, as related to the first wave. Okay, and we'll bring it down here. And you can see it's just over a 1.618, okay? So we could label that, and I'll do that for you bulls here, okay? Because it's it's possible because of this price action here. It sure looks like a sideways forward, doesn't it? So we have a one up, a two down, a three up, and all this sideways four stuff. So what do we need to see happen? Well, the four low has to hold above the wave one high that wave one high here is right at uh i believe it's 610 okay or thereabouts i got 620 here my bad here let's just draw that across yeah it looks like it's right at 620 okay so a move below 620 hurts the bullish case okay and it increases the odds that uh this move is going further down all right, so we need to see that. Conversely, the bulls need to see a move above this high at 673. And then the other one, I think it was uh, yeah, 719, then 762. Okay, so this is very interesting how this is rolling out here. But uh, here is that make or break level, right on at 619, 620. And you can see it came really close right over here, if I can get that up there, okay? So uh, the bulls and bears have their scenarios and their make or break points here. Okay, let's see if we can touch base with the NASDAQ real quick. The NASDAQ made its high 
on February 16th. You can see a one, two, three, four, five, one down, two up, three. Let me label that for you guys. All right, I'm getting a little fast for all you guys, I think. I'll slow it down. Let's get a, no, we don't want an ABC. We want a one, two, three, four, five. This started with a leading diagonal triangle. One, two, three, four, five. That was one. There's two. And then we got one, two, three, four, five. That's three. An obvious four here, A, B, C. There's our four. And then we've got a, this should be a multiple of five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's five. There we go. That's a completed five waves. And let me put that in there again. I'm on a different system today. But I wanted to get this report out for you guys. I believe there's one. There's two, there's three, there's four, and there is five. Did it stay this time? Yes. Okay, let me scrunch that up a little bit. There we go. So let's see what the Fibonacci retracement of that is and see where that relates to this most recent move up. There's our all-time high. Here is our retracement down. And there we are right at the 618, okay? So uh, we, if you're a, a bear on this one, you want to see this second wave high of 13,297 hold, okay? And then we need to see a break of this low here, which is right at 12,204. Okay, I think I can get a little better on that. It's, uh, I got 12,208. It's right around there, okay? Uh, we'll call it 12.204, a break of that, and then uh, that means wave three down is happening. So we have one down, two up, and three down, okay? We can get a multiple of that. Why don't we if that uh, that high holds? Let me get a Fibonacci extension here. There we've got one. There we've got two right up there. And let's see where that gives us a three. All right, three equals one at 11.630 and a 1.618 at 10.594. All right, that's what the bears are looking at. Break of this low, break of the wave one low, and then off to the races to the downside. The bears need a break of that wave too high, which is right at 13.297, okay? And the all-time high obviously would be next on the list. I want to take a quick look at the Dow. Okay, we're doing the main indexes here. And this is left over from the last time I did the Dow. Let me move that one down because it looks like it's higher than four, but it's not actually. There we go on a daily chart from the March lows. We have a one up, a two down, a three up, and a four down. You can see five gains equality with one right at 13, two, I'm sorry, 32,700. And it overshot it. But uh, what's interesting here is how this fifth wave subdivides. I really, even with the S&P, I said it back then in November, the speed of this move up doesn't look like a one, especially when you look at the angle of ascent on wave three. One is almost vertical compared to a 45 degree angle for wave three. But I want to get in there and do an extension because there is a chance that the Dow could go higher than what's labeled as five there. If that's one up and that's two down right there, you can see three gains equality with one right there. We'd expect a fourth wave pullback and then something higher. So uh, structurally, five is higher than three. It could be complete at that high on uh, March 18th. Okay, but there's a possibility this could go higher. We got to watch this on a much closer basis to see how this is going to play out. Okay, big picture here, not the big picture, but the the more um, focus is what we are right now on the S&P, where we are with that uh, second wave retracement between the 618 and the 786. We'll see if this tries to make a double top at the 1.618 multiple or if we're going to get that third wave down, that'll be quite a move from 38.40. You know, that's uh, about 100 points. And then if it gets to 1618, we're looking at another 60 points on top of that. So we'll see how that plays out. Thank you, everyone. And until next time, 
Take care, everyone.